I'm here at LuxCon with artist Dave Dorman. Uh, thank you for speaking with me. My pleasure. Is there an artwork here you are most proud of and why? Uh, I'd say probably the Captain Nemo piece that uh, we can see hanging uh, on the board. Okay. Um, uh, that's a, a piece that uh, obviously a character from my childhood, very mm. famous character, um, mm. some someone who has inspired uh, you know, a sense of adventure. Mm. And uh, I got to a point in, in my career and, and stylistically that I was able to create mm. uh, an image of Captain Nemo that uh, that I saw in my head, mm. and um, it, it turned out great. And it's it's one of the highlights of, of this show, and certainly. Uh, a highlight of my career. Mm -hmm. So, if I recall, Captain Nemo was, uh, I forget his nationality. He, he was, um, I believe he was from Pakistan, but he, yeah. he, he was of a culture that, that didn't wear the turban. Okay. Uh, but, you know, I, like I say, I'm, I'm working from my, my memories and my feelings of the character. Right. And, you know, the, the turban is, is part of that imagery. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, that's why I included it uh, in the painting. And I notice it because, um, you know, most depictions of Captain Nemo is American or English, and, and you make them, you know. Oh, no, he's, not, he's Middle Eastern, absolutely. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a, a scholar of, of uh, the written work, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I definitely know he's, uh, uh, he's Middle Eastern, and that's the way I wanted to portray him. Cool. Yeah, I like that. Um, how do you know when a work is finished? Uh, it's just a gut feeling. Mm -hmm. um, you, you get to a point where there's not much more you can add to make it more interesting. I mean, certainly you could noodle it to death in little details and such, but, um, you know, you get to a point where, where you have an image in your head, and once it's on the board, you know, it's done. So, yeah, you know, I, I have no firm, you know, time frame or... or uh, uh, you know, element that I do at the last minute. It's just, it's done, and then I sit back from the drawing table and look. Sometimes I'll come back the next day and maybe add a little bit after I've had a chance to look at it. But um, uh, no, when it's done, it's done. Okay. What inspires you? Uh, imagination. Uh, I'm a big fan of comics and, and uh, movies, and, you know, visual things. Um, the world around me is, is fascinating you know, enough, mm -hmm. but uh, to be able to envision you know, things that don't exist, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's a really fun deal. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's, that's great inspiration. Seeing what other artists uh, are doing, you know, seeing my peers, you know, creating wonderful imagery, mm -hmm. uh, that's certainly an inspiration. And, and that's what, uh, uh, what got me uh, really fired up when I was young was looking at other artists and, and having that inspiration from the professionals that I was looking at when I was a kid and saying, you know, I'd really, you know, I'd really like to do that yeah. when I get older. And, and I'm lucky enough that, uh, that I can. Yeah, okay. Uh, what is your most important artist tool? Is there something you can't live without in your studio? Uh, no, I mean, it's a combination of tools. It's, it's, uh, it's just the things that make the mark on the paper. Uh, it's the pencils, the pens, the, the paints, the brushes. Because uh, I'm not an artist without the, the element to make that mark on a piece of paper that someone else can see. Uh, so there's no, there's no one tool. It's, it's a combination of things. I mean, the, the, the biggest tool in the studio is my head. You know my imagination, mm -hmm. and then you know it. Uh, you know wh whatever I can uh, get, you know, out of that imagery and put it on the board. Uh, that's sort of where the magic happens. But you know, physically, there's no real single tool that um, that that would be any more important than any other tool. Okay. All right. Is there an element of, of art you enjoy working with most, and why? Um, you would really have to define element, you know. So that's open-ended, either a medium yeah. or a pro part of the process? Um, well, there's two parts of the process. One is, is getting that idea from your head to the paper mm -hmm. and, and having it coherent. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, but, 
but you know, part of the creative process is, is, is getting that image down and then playing with it, maybe not having it end up like you have it that you had it in your head to begin with, mm -hmm. uh, having it develop. And then the second part of that is actually doing, doing the drawing, making that image full. Um, you know, bringing it to life, not just a, a quick sketch, but, but developing it to where it is a, a nice, solid image. And then the third part, you know, if you want to take it to a next level, would be translating that drawing you know, into a full color painting. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, adding you know, a completely new dimension, going from a black and white piece mm -hmm. uh, to a fully tonal color piece. Because mm -hmm. uh, that can change the look of the, that, that drawing and that idea tremendously mm -hmm. on how you approach that color. Right. Uh, so there, there are, I consider, three stages of creating the piece of art. The original idea, excuse me, the original idea, uh, the drawing of it, which is really the, the, the sort of finalizing of that idea, and then taking it one step further and, and adding the life uh, through the color uh, to that, that piece. Yeah. Okay. How did you start making art, and why do you make art? Uh, I started you know, doing art because I, I love comics and I love the you know I read a lot of books when I was younger. I loved the covers, the paperback covers, science fiction things. You know, yeah. Doc Savage, you know James Bama doing Doc Savage and okay. Jim Steranko doing The Shadow and uh, you know uh, you know Robert E. Howard for Zeta and and uh, you know, I just love those books and I love the art. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love comics as well, and so what got me started was just copying comics. I just thought it was it was fun to to you know draw those heroes, okay. and so that led me into um, you know into having you know an interest in drawing. Okay. And then when I I got to the point where, where I thought that I might like to you know draw comic books for a living, mm -hmm. I was also teaching myself how to paint. And I found I was more comfortable doing single illustrations to tell a story rather than, you know, six uh, panels per page you know, as continuous panel comic books. Right. Uh, because my concentration would be on one panel at a time, and in comics you really can't tell a story that way. You right. have to, you know, break it down into a scene and then break the movement into panels. And I couldn't do that. And my mind just, um, just couldn't wrap itself around it because I was always concentrating on one image. So, so sort of learning how to paint uh, uh, you know, uh, came right in at, at the right time when I made that decision to concentrate on single imagery. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where that came from. Okay. So you've been doing it since you were young then? I guess. Yeah, well, I, I started seriously making that decision uh, about 18. Okay. And uh, so that's where I, I really set my, my, my career goals, okay. to be an illustrator. And so I, I, I set some, some you know, short-term goals, you know, I'm going to be a better, um, uh, going to be better at drawing, because I know a good painting needs to have a good drawing underneath it. I'm going to learn more techniques in painting, so I can be more uh, have more variety in my style, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. And so that that all sort of worked together. Um, to or when I was um, probably about 23 or 24, I started making uh, my living at doing illustration through uh, small publications, uh, comic books, uh, uh, smaller paperback uh, companies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then a couple of years after that, Hasbro saw my work um, uh, and uh, you know started working with them for six years doing GI Joe uh, artwork for uh, their research and development department. Okay. And uh, you know, in that that time, I was getting better at what I was doing and getting more exposure through other venues, and, and so I was just you know, like like any you know typical artist, you just work your way up from, you know, the smaller things to the bigger things, build a good reputation, and, and hopefully it all pays off, and for me it did. So is it at Hasbro that you felt like you're really in it, and this will be your lifelong career, or is there a little... Oh, no, there, it was before Hasbro. I mean, Hasbro was nice because that was a regular gig, Okay. but, uh, uh, you know, as a freelancer, it's, it's always nice to have a regular gig because you don't know where the next job is going to come from. Okay. So that gave me a little bit more confidence that, uh, you know, there were long-term projects projects out there uh, that it didn't have to join a company uh, to be able to work with a company to do 
those projects. And, and that's the way it is nowadays with uh, uh, pre-production work and, and design work for, for um, uh, gaming companies and movies and, and that type of thing is they're not hiring you on a, per, uh, on, a, on a permanent basis. They're hiring you per project, but it's a long-term thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, um, you know, once I started making a living at it, I wasn't really worried about it. It was just making those initial breaks mm -hmm. to uh, start building my career. Do you think gaming, when gaming, uh, you know, like the card games and that stuff blew up, did that open up a whole new avenue for for illustrators? And uh, I think so, just because the amount of, of work that needed to be done mm -hmm. uh, for for those type of games and, and uh, uh, you know, Magic Gathering and then Dungeons and Dragons and uh, other companies started to do similar games. So yeah, a lot of material uh, needed to be produced at that time. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, a lot of artists got in, involved. You know, a lot of young guys coming in that wouldn't have had that uh, uh, that exposure. Um, you know, this company need, needed you know that you know, large number of artists. So a lot of young guys got you know good exposure uh, for their first gigs. Yeah, hmm. interesting. Okay. Um, really that. What role does the artist have in society? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, the artist is an entertainer. Uh, you, you, want, you want to, well, let me take that back. Um, a commercial artist is, is being hired to, to you know, give the client an image that they can use to sell something. Right. So, I mean, that's just part of, of the, the uh, commercial aspects of, of, uh, of the work and, and uh, uh, you know, the economy. Uh, we're part of that, uh, uh, you know, product. Um, uh, for the other part of it, you know, we're entertainers. We want to give uh, the viewer something interesting uh, to look at and, you know, hopefully enjoy. You know, so it's like, it's like, you know, a frame out of a movie. You go to a movie and, you know, hopefully you, you like it or not. But in, in this case, we're just giving you one image and hopefully telling a story with it. Um, and uh, you know, just giving you something pleasant to look at, even even though it may be a horror piece, you know, with you know a pool of blood with rats drinking out of it, or yeah. you know, scary Pennywise the the uh, clown. Right. Um, you know, there's still there's still some enjoyment. Uh, you know, like people like going to horror films. Mm. So yeah, I I consider myself you know part. Uh, you know, part commercial artist doing it, you know, as as a job for other people, mm -hmm. and part entertainer. I'm painting things that I like to paint or that other people like to see, right. and I present it to them, and that's it. Right. Right. Uh, what movies, books, or other artwork in science fiction or fantasy have inspired you? Um, be, being a uh, um, fan of movies and, and reading science fiction, um, all, all of it does inspire me. Um, Star Wars in particular, uh, it's, it's okay. uh, Star Wars in particular was, um, uh, was a big influence on me because I was just, I had just made that decision to move into uh, art and so Star Wars had a lot of the really cool images and, and uh, uh, I started reading more about special effects and finding out about pre-production illustrators and, and seeing some of those uh, illustrations and, and through books and such. So it was a really, uh, a, a really inspiring thing for me, you know, to understand that uh, uh, you know, art just wasn't uh, paperback covers and, and comic books. Right. So that sort of broadened my uh, horizon as far as what art could be. Uh, but yeah, uh, being a, a fan of film and, and comics and, and books, it's just part of my life, just like art is. Okay. Is there an art piece you'd like to create that you haven't done so yet, and what is it? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I mean, as as I evolve as an artist, I'm going to have images in my head. I have more images in my head than I can paint. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been lucky to be involved in so many different uh, projects that that I love, either as film or as comics or as toys. You know, Indiana Jones, Star Wars, Aliens, Predator, Hasbro, GI Joe. Um, uh, just, uh, just a lot of really fun things, and I've, you know, been able to create my own heroes and, and storylines. Yeah. So, um, uh, so yeah, there's, there's not one thing that I look forward to doing because there's always more coming. 
Uh, and with every job, I try to, to do my best, whether to uh, uh, learn something new through that piece of artwork or to uh, try something visually that might excite uh, the viewer or just please myself uh, in doing the artwork. So yeah, the, 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 the next piece that I do is always going to be you know, a favorite mm -hmm. uh, because it's, it's something that doesn't exist that I make exist. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's all the questions I have. Do you have any last words? Or? Um, uh, what uh, um, uh, uh, what's your um, uh, listener group? Uh, I would say it's, uh, Is it so students it's, or? It's, yeah, more uh, ch uh, kids. I'm aiming at kids to try to get them more interested in science through sci-fi and fantasy. Oh, okay. You know. um, I found uh, just from being a kid and having uh, uh, an interest in science fiction and fantasy and then bringing it into my artwork, um, I found it just, just very educational because science, science fiction, part of it is science. Mm -hmm. And so you're being taught things that might, you might not necessarily be taught in school, mm -hmm. uh, you know, about time and physics and, and space travel. and and you know different uh, uh, creatures and how they live and and those are all part of of you know doing this type of art science fiction fantasy art is, is you have to create things that that may not exist or are uh, extrapolations of what do exist but maybe you know uh, 10,000 years from now so you have to figure that out and, and certainly you know my interest in, in uh, reading uh, science fiction viewing science fiction uh, 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 movies um, that has helped me uh, greatly uh, and for those that want to uh, pursue art as a living uh, you can uh, don't let anybody tell you that you can't because you can as long as you have uh, the desire to do it, uh, the patience to work at it, and the persistence just to keep going at it. So, um, you know, uh, whether you're going to be a scientist or whether you're going to be an artist, follow your heart. Right. Uh, do what you want to do. Okay. Be, you know, be happy. Okay, good. Well, thank you. That's it. Thank you're you. welcome. Please visit chrisalvarez.com for more cool stuff. That's C R I S A L. V-A-R-E-Z dot com. Thanks for listening and keep imagining the future.